Yeah, you bet. I'll show you what we're dealing with right now for winds. Now, look, it has been a windy day all day long. However, as of right now, any wind advisors that we had, and we did have them issued today, uh, they've all been allowed to expire. Winds are blowing somewhere, you know, 20 miles per hour north of the city around White Plains, 22 in the city, 36 Babylon's about the biggest wind gust you're finding as of right now. Earlier in the day, they were stronger. And again, we had a wind advisory uh, that had been in effect. LaGuardia had the strongest wind gust at 47 miles per hour. Look at Teterboro. Second strongest of all the area airports at around a 30 mile, 39 mile per hour gust. The best we can tell right now, okay, checking the winds at the time uh, that we, we believe this took place, winds were gusting 35 miles per hour, maybe a little bit stronger than that, uh, but right in line with that, uh, that 39 that you see for Teterboro. Uh, again, as Maurice was saying, we don't know if that's the cause. Uh, we'll wait for the FAA to investigate, but that's what your winds were doing, all because of that low pressure system that gave us the terrible day on Saturday. It's now pushed out of the area. High pressure fills in behind it. Whenever you get that high and that low, in some sort of vicinity of one another, you get that that pitching machine effect I'm, I'm constantly showing you. Rotation counterclockwise on the low, clockwise on the high, and boom, it makes those winds really blow. Uh, but if you zoom in tight here, I want to show you a little something. I, I've got, all right, and now let's circle it for you right there, the Teterboro Airport. Uh, pilots, whether you're flying a, a big commercial plane, whether you're flying a m m private single engine like myself, you land into the wind. Well, the winds, okay, are coming in from the uh, the northwest. These are the two configurated runways that you have at Teterboro. My, and I don't know this for sure, but my thought is the best you can do landing into the wind is probably land runway one. And then you want to yaw your aircraft, turn it sort of into the wind. You've seen this before, airplanes coming in like this, they turn into the wind, they almost land sort of sideways. It happens often. And this is what uh, Maurice was speculating, and we all are right now. We don't know for sure. It shouldn't have been the type of wind that could catastrophically, you know, tear apart a plane like that. However, if it's a quarter of a mile away from, run from landing, it's about four to 500 feet above the runway. You have any sort of problem, be it the pilot having, you know, a, a, a medical situation or be it uh, anything, any sort of thing, sort of mechanical. 400 feet, you, you have no time to react. You have no time to gain airspeed because if you have a problem with your plane and you're that far from the ground, the only the way you can get speed is to lower the nose. You got nowhere to lower it. The ground is right there. So we'll wait to find out what the uh, investigators are telling us. But just a terrible situation around Teterboro. All I can tell you, it was not visibility. Visibility was 10 miles. That's fine. Visual flight rules. Uh, it, it also was not a big, severe thunderstorm in the area. The only thing I have in the weather office right now uh, are winds, and I can't begin to tell you if that was the cause or not. But uh, I'll give you everything I know as we get it. Um, Maurice Christine, let's go back to you. All right, Lonnie, thank you. Yeah,